What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about how to write your own indicator. Well technically it's not writing your own indicator, at least what I'm going to show you today is more like how to port over an indicator from TradingView. You can probably do this with any other indicator that you find in another language, another programming language, if you're familiar with that programming language. So let me explain why I end up having to write my own indicator well, or modifying and creating my own indicator here. I'm sure every one of you is, is very familiar with the RSI Bull Bear ADX strategy which I showed down here in this video and I have explained and talked about it in the past and I actually also explain what is the ADX indicator and how to use it. So you definitely should watch that video if you don't know what the indicator is and what it does because what I'm essentially showing you today is how I'm going to modify this indicator because Technically, this indicator that we currently have, or that we currently use, is wrong. That's simply put, it's not the correct one. I mean, is it wrong to the point where it's absolutely broken? No, because I mean, I backtest using that indicator, and I know a ton of you guys have already backtested this strategy uh, using this indicator. It works. So, but the problem is this indicator relies on couple other indicators as well so I'll briefly cover it right now so in Investopedia it explains what the ADX indicator is it uses two additional indicators called the plus DI and the minus DI as you see it here they, they might call plus DMI but it's really just plus DI or minus DI these two additional trend lines that you see here they are used to help calculate the ADX the problem with the ADX indicator in Gecko is that the, the plus DI and the minus DI is incorrectly calculated. The ADX still works, I guess. So like if you look through it, like basically what I did was I put out log that info that I show here and actually every single candle lists out the ADX and the plus DI and the minus DI. The ADX was very close and the plus DI and the minus DI was completely off compared to the chart. So let's go to the chart right here and the white line is the ADX. The minus DI is the red line and the plus DI is the green line. So while I had the log.info pumping out to the console and I'm seeing the stats of the ADX that, that matches, the plus DI and the minus DI, it was completely off. Like they would be all around like three or five. It never goes higher than like five or six. I never saw higher than five or six. So as you can see here, they are regularly in a pretty high range. I think like usually from like 10 to 60 or whatever it is, but you will see it go up and down. But in the gecko indicator, the plus DI and minus DI doesn't do that. It literally just sticks around three to five, three to five. So I knew at that point something was broken. So that's why I went and tried to read up on what the ADX indicator is and the formula and how to calculate it. And they have it in Investopedia. So I'm just going to really cover the section right here that, that is specifically used and that is not used in the formula in Gecko. And it's right here. So they say the positive directional indicator or plus DI equals 100 times the exponential moving average of plus DM divided by the average true range over a given number of time periods. The plus DI, you need to 100 times something. So basically, no matter what, if you are going to calculate the plus DI, you need to 100 times the EMA of the plus DM, whatever the plus DM is here, which was explained earlier. But don't worry about that. So it's just the fact that you know you need to have a EMA of the plus DM, and it's got to be 100 times that. If you go into the ADX indicator here, so I have the old version right here pulled up. They're written in a way so that you can componentize it so that if you need the DX indicators, you have it written separately. And if the DX indicator needs other stuff, like let's say the EMA, you will have the DX indicator call the EMA file and be, be able to access it that way. So like right here, you see that var.dx requires the DX function, the DX indicator. So let's go back here for a second. So inside Gecko, if you go into strategies folder, you'll see that all the indicators are here and you'll see that there's ADX, but the ADX again requires other indicators. So ADX also requires the DX indicator. So when you guys were setting up the RSI Bull Bear ADX strategy, you actually not only required to have the ADX indicator, you also needed the ATR indicator, SMMA indicator, and the Trange indicator. Oh, actually, obviously, you also need the DX. Sorry. So there's four indicators that you need that, that supplies information to the ADX. 
Inside the ADX indicator, if you go in here, you'll see the calculation wise it explains how it calculates the DM up, the DM down, the DI up, and the DI down. He called it DI up and down. Technically, they should be DI plus or plus DI or minus DI. So, but this equate up with plus and down with minus, and you understand what the calculations are. So anyway, going back to the formula, plus DI is calculated using 100 times the exponential moving average of the plus DM. But if you go into the formula here, the plus DI only uses the DM up. It doesn't. It's not an EMA. It's just a regular DM up. So I mean, it could be the plus DM was already calculated in an EMA format, perhaps using a period of weight over here. All I know is that it's the plus DM divided by this dot ATR dot result, which is the average true range, which is what this is, ATR dot JS. ATR stands for average true range. As you can see here, it uses it requires two other indicators, the train, the trange, I call it trange, even though it's technically not it, after I figure out what it is, and the SMMA. So the trange is actually T range or true range. All these you can look up on Investopedia and I'll ex explain for you what each of these indicators does. But essentially the average true range is a calculation of the true range indicator over a average period of you know 14 or whatever period you're using. So the default is 14. And then the SMMA is the smooth, simple moving average. It's a way to smooth out the simple moving average. So that's also needed by the ATR indicator. But if you go back to the formula they have, 100 times is not there. So what I end up doing, if you go in here, you go to show source code. You actually see how um, Masa Nakamura, he's the one that wrote this indicator. You actually can see the code that he used to write this indicator out. It might be a little hard to follow if you don't understand Pine Script but there is the PineScript reference right here. So PineScript is just another programming language, except that it's very simplified to only pretty much, I mean, the major user, I think it is TradingView. What I essentially did was ported this particular indicator from TradingView into my indicator, which I wrote over here. And I'll be putting this indicator up on GitHub. So you guys can download it and try it out. But essentially, I didn't just write the ADX indicator. I also had to uh, rewrite the DX indicator as well. The first thing I did was I just actually copied this whole entire thing. So even though it says locked, you can't edit it, I'm still able to, let's say, highlight it and copy it. So that's why I did. I copied it, and I just pasted it over into Visual Studio Code like this. So now I can look at it and see it and have it all highlighted and understand what is, what is it talking about. And then from here, I'm able to just sort of modify my indicator to really match what's needed by the PineScript version of ADX. If you look at it right here on line 17, it needs SMA. So basically at the end, it uses SMA to create the ADX indicator from the DX indicator. That's why in my ADX strategy, it requires the SMA indicator. But again, because of how I've written it, the only two indicators that you need is the ADX indicator and the DX indicator. So let me go and explain how a indicator works so that you guys can understand it more. So in case you guys do want to create your own indicator down the line, there's really only two functions as you see here inside indicator. There's an instantiation function. When you declare the indicator, you can fill it with some sort of uh, variable inside. So in this case, it's period. So period is the, it's usually the length of how many uh, candles you need to calculate this particular indicator. So let's say the ADX, the default is 14, and same for RSI, as default is 14. So most indicators need period, but some indicators would use, and actually I looked through them over here, most of them use period for initializing the indicator. But some of them, like the SMMA, actually uses the weight. So that's the first function. The second function, I'm going back to ADX here, is the update function. The update function essentially is, it updates the indicator with some piece of information. So in ADX, we're updating the indicator with candle so that it has uh, the candle information and it could process that candle and add that candle in, into this calculation and be able to calculate the result. Different indicators require different information. So in this case, the ADX indicator requires a candle. Some other indicators would require other stuff. 
So if you go, let's for example, SMMA uses price. So those two I see a lot. When you're calling an indicator, the indicator is fed automatically the candle information at every new candle. But if the indicator itself uses another indicator like I have in here, ADX, it uses the DX indicator, what you have to do is pass that candle information into this other indicator like I have here in the update function. So literally inside the update function here, I'm calling the DX indicator and calling the DX indicator's update function and passing the candle that I got from here into the into here. So that literally the DX indicator will get that same candle information and will know how to update itself and process that candle. So that's pretty much what I did. I think there's a couple of things I really wanted to cover is that with the Pine scripts. If you're not familiar with the Pine script, there's a couple of things you definitely need to know. One is the brackets. Yes, you see over here the back the brackets. The brackets is basically a way for you to access previous candle information or previous value information. So instead of having to create your own array of the previous candles and store them in an array, Pine script does it for you already. But within Gecko, you don't get the freebie. So you have to do it yourself in a sense. So what I am having to do is within the DX function in here, since the DX function requires a calculation that uses the previous candle, I literally created the last candle variable right here, make it a false. And then at the end of the update function, as you can see, we scroll down to the end of the update function here, I actually assign this dot last candle equal candle. But point being, whenever the Pine script language calls for bracket like it has here and if you go back into the strategy and into the pine script indicator you see that they use smooth true range bracket one it means that it uses the smooth true range of the previous candle <laughs> so i was filling in the permission so like literally i was using this that last smooth true range i was filling it in with the current one so that when it reads it the next time around it will have the last one to calculate and so on and so forth, repeat the process. So another thing I want to point out in the Pine script is NZ. NZ is non-zero value. The problem with Gecko is that depends on how you write the strategy. Sometimes it would you end up crashing the indicator, crashing your uh, crashing Gecko if you have a NZ value in here. So what I end up doing a lot of times was I was using is this a question mark expression? Basically, it was a it's a it's pretty much like an if statement. But right here you see the question mark colon expression. So what it does is like. If this evaluates to true, then we're gonna use this value. If it's false, it evaluates to zero. Essentially, that's why I did multiple times to pretty much calculate some of these information in here that's needed to calculate the NZ value. And finally, the ABS. The ABS is the absolute value. So in JavaScript, they actually do support that, fortunately. That's one of the few things that JavaScript support. So that says map the ABS, and you can use that to calculate a absolute value of whatever you're trying to calculate in here. Again, the max, the max is the same thing. The max is the same kind of problem in the sense the max needed me. They don't, JavaScript don't have max in here. So again, I use the, the same thing, the question mark, evaluate this previous statement and have it come out to true or false for the basically the max. If it's true, then this is the max. If it's not, then the other one is the max, so on and so forth. That's how it was able to calculate out all this inside the ADX function in here. and Pretty much that's what I did to literally calculate and um, basically port over the entire Pine script into Gecko. The rest of it, the plot lines, those are useless because you don't actually plot stuff on Gecko, at least not the command line interface. I would love to actually plot this in the UI, but that's a whole different topic altogether. So anyway, guys, that's my video for today. I, I know it ran a little long, but I hope this helps you understand how to port a indicator from trading view into Gecko. And perhaps that's enough to get you started to help write your own indicator if you have a very basic indicator that you want to have work in Gecko. So anyway guys, that's my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.